What is more important in the history of the development of human civilization, sex or violence? So mating strategies or military <laughs> strategies? Oh, well, both are important. I mean, uh, first of all, I mean, humans are a sexually reproducing species, and so everything has to go through sex. You know, so in our, our mating psychology has to be very rich and complex because uh, to succeed, uh, for us to be here now, uh, all of our ancestors in a, an unbroken chain uh, have had to succeed in selecting a fertile mate, attracting that mate, uh, be mutually chosen by that mate, um, stay together long enough, do all the sexual things you need to do to reproduce, have the kids survive, et cetera. So everything has to go through mating. And in that sense, I think it's, uh, I mean, survival was really only uh, a means to an end, if you, if you will. Uh, so, uh, so, so sex has got to be important, and humans have a very rich, evolved sexual psychology or an evolved mating psychology. Okay, but uh, I wouldn't minimize the importance of violence either. There's a ton of evidence that humans evolved in the context of small groups and with a fair amount of small group warfare, so intertribal warfare, uh, where, uh, and this is a, a harsh realization, but there historically, um, this is part of our bad evolutionary history, it has been advantageous from a purely reproductive standpoint to conquer uh, a neighboring group, kill the males, uh, and uh, get whatever resources they have, including females and, and sexual resources, tool, as well as tools, weapons, territory and so forth and so um and so i think that we have uh, and of course it's it's typically males um who do that i mean yes some females have participated in warfare but uh as far as i know there's never been a single case in all of human recorded history of women forming a war tribe with other women to attack another group of women and kill them and capture the men uh as husbands but the, these, uh, this phenomenon is common um, in the ethnographic record and small group uh, studies. Um, it, it's part of our common thing. So just one concrete example. Unfortunately, he's dead now. He passed away. Napoleon Chagnon, who studied the Yanomamo for many, many years, um, when he first started interviewing them, he, he asked them, you know, why do you go to war? Um, and they said, well, to, to capture women, of course, but it's the only sensible reason. And they said, you know, why do why does your culture go to war, or however they phrased it? And, and he said, well, you know, we go to war for to spread democracy and ideas and everything. And they basically fell off their logs laughing at such a stupid reason, because why risk your life for anything um, other than women? Now, of course, it's more complex than that, because uh, some um, go to war for... Uh, reputational reasons. They say if we if we don't retaliate because we've been attacked and they've stolen three of our women, if we don't retaliate, then we will get a reputation as exploitable, and then other groups will start to attack us as well. And so they get into these cycles of um, you know like the Hatfields and McCoys of uh, attacks, counterattacks, retribution, and part of it is is um, reputation management. Um, so that's that's between groups, and and I think that's been the the primary source of violence, but not the only source. So um, there's also within group conflict, and so many ethnographies, many traditional societies have things. Some of them are ritualized, like wrestling matches, or uh, in the Yanomamo, they have uh, these uh, or used to these. Uh, chest pounding duels where so if we're in this match you challenge me and i have to of course so chest pounding duel <laughs> it, i like this yeah yeah so, so it's not you're not hitting each other you're just it's like peacocking you really oh, oh no you're hitting each other oh so, sorry yeah so yeah. They, they they get 20 paces away and they they run up and you punch the other guy in the chest and in he has chest. to basically stand there and then he Ribs does the same and everything you. oh wow uh and then it's basically last man standing. That's, well, I suppose that's better than the face. That's an interesting decision with the chest. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm sure if you get good at that kind of thing, you could start breaking ribs. Yeah. And you can get loose about the rules of where exactly in the chest you can hit. What are, <laughs> and, yeah. then, and there's that guy who's always known for hitting not exactly in the chest, <laughs> right, accidentally right, missing. <laughs> right, right, the, the, the Mike Tyson of- <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> right, yeah. eating your ear off. So yeah. interesting, so there's like ritualized uh, conflict, to sort of uh, purify the, uh, the competition that, that, that resolves some kind of issue. Well, yeah, it's in part to establish status hierarchies, yeah. you know, um, but, um, but also, and here's, here's just another, one more concrete point on, on that. The Yanomami, we don't have this in our language. We just have one word for kill or murder, but the Yanomami have, um, you're either an Uno, if you're a male, you're an Uno Kai or a non Uno Kai. The non Uno Kai are, men who have not killed. Uh, if you're an unokai, that means you have killed someone. And the unokai um, among the Anamamo historically had higher status and more wives. So they're a, a uh, polygynous uh, society, which, is, which has been true of um, something like 83 to 85% of uh, traditional societies 